That timed out pretty perfectly. Just a quick one minute ad. We are in a game number three. It is the last life of this guy here. He's the blue zerg, sort of. And his opponent in the top right hand corner of the map, we have the red zerg player representing team root and up at match point. It's Hydra. Very good then. Uh, so uh, it's back to that 2-0 lead. So far, Dreamhack round of 16 has been blessed with ace matches and comebacks, and it's been really cool. But Hydra looks quite dominant. Not sure what sort of has to uh, make different here. Uh, he's. I think he's got to find some way to either take into the much later stage of the game by trying to match uh, Hydra in the the way that he's playing with these earlier Roach openers. Or he's got to find some way to punish the early Roach opener, because that really, I feel like, always comes down to where I draw a lot of the advantages that Hydra gets that sort of spirals later on in the game, where he starts the Roach production early and just stays ahead with the Roach count for, like, the entire rest of the game. Yeah, yeah. And this certainly isn't, you know, Hydra knowing the meta and, and sort of just being, you know, stuck in Heart of the Swarm times. No, that's not the way that it's actually going. It's just that sort of probably has a bit of a, of a block against, well, maybe Hydra, you know, the person, mm -hmm. uh, but also against the style of play where, you know, maybe in ladder he's also frustrated. I mean, like, how do you stop them from getting ahead despite going for these earlier roaches? Where certainly in other ZVZs, and we've cast a lot of them on the European server, you have uh, people who can work around it. You know, they're they're... A little more, uh, I don't know, they get luckier hits with the Banelings mm -hmm. on the drones. They actually do a really nice job, uh, you know, um, what's the word? Making them think they're going to counterattack, making the Roach mm -hmm. player play too safe, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, but Hydra does not seem scared of sort of, and that might be the biggest problem. Hydra's being like, I, think I got this. That's such a good way to describe it, right? Because you think about some of the things that sort of tried to do to keep the Roaches at home and give him self time to kind of capitalize on the Banelink hit that he got. And it tried to make some Zerglings and do a run by. The Zerglings did next to nothing. And he ended up sacrificing what was actually a huge deal in early stage in ZVZ of probably five, six drones into Zerglings that uh, didn't accomplish anything. Yet again, sort of goes for the Baneling Nest, is trying to beat out Hydra's third base, I'm going to guess. Um, mm -hmm. But Hydra's right on his tail, so if he's going to beat out the third base, it's going to have to be with a flood of Lings and Banelings. Taking advantage of Hydra's just, mm. you know, reluctance to go for his own Baneling Nest. Yeah, and we once again see that Roach Horn coming down from Hydra. Now... With this map, you can put a bit more pressure on that third expansion. Uh, this could be a potential avenue of opportunity, and sort of maybe seeing that as he starts pumping out Zerglings and Mass. Uh, gonna be trying to push back one of those Overlords, but Hydra sees all of these Zerglings making their way across the map, and he's gonna see the Banelings trying to morph in as well. Mm, have them make them in, like, you know, <laughs> midfield is not the ideal, but Hydra took a great fight initially. Ooh. Uh, takes an okay one uh, there. <laughs> Runs in the one bailing. Oh, that was two bailings. Or two lanes from one bailing. It was a softened up bailing, I think, so. Yeah, not, there you go. not the worst trade. But now, I, like, sort of, I think his best bet is really, like, kind of all in off of this, right? Like, he has a third base. He could start to drone. He sees an opportunity to, but definitely commit to it because Hydra has not gotten oh. Banelings. The Roaches, they oh. sure are, they're coming out, but these Lings, you know, they get into those crevices. They get past those Queens, and they're constantly threatening counterattacks. They can get you through this early game and can get you ahead. Just, you know, they've got to play it really, really tight. Oh, Queen's getting away from the ramp. The Roaches are going to coming out, though. And I think sort of has to make a decision. Is he going to sacrifice his army to take out this hatchery? Uh... Or is he going to try and go for a run by into the main base? I, I don't feel like the run by is going to be the safe play. I don't oh, think this is the better the option. Yeah, that, that was not oh. the good option. It was either kill the hatchery, sacrifice your army, or just dodge and, and dip around and try and get to that main base. Actually, attacking the road army was never going to go very well. Sort of, I think he thought about, like, okay, maybe I'll keep these lings alive and just keep them for, like, threatening counterattacks, but he realized that the roach count is too much, and that Hydra, again, not being very scared of him, might just push across the map, so he gives up on the lings, he does it on his own roach warren, a spine crawler as well, and Hydra, yet again, feels like he's taking control. Easily. Yeah, I, I really don't, that's such an awkward position to be put into when you see the roaches come out again in that situation, and you have to say, well, do I just lose and sacrifice my entire army to kill the third hatcher and 
potentially just die to the counterattack? I mean, he only just now finished up his Roach Warren, so I, I kind of don't blame him for a bit of that indecision, but at the same time, I don't know, I, I'm almost wondering, like, was the right decision to right-click on the hatchery and even throw the Banelings into it? I mean, the Banelings weren't going to do a whole lot anywhere else, so I don't know. Mm. He does still have a nice little pile of links here that the roaches ever do move out, so they'll certainly be able to get into the you know, main and third base. He also started his plus one kind of sneakily behind this, even before his roach horn was done. So he has a bit of a lead with that once again, but that did not help him on the Dust Towers game. That was also a Nidus worm, so I don't know. Drum is at fault. <laughs> Yeah, I'm almost wondering if the way that you can start to deal with this, because one thing I like about this game for sort of... Uh, okay. <laughs> one thing I like about this game for sort of is the fact that he has kept these Zerglings alive that he made earlier on. So even though he lost a couple of them to the Roaches and everything, Hydra has to be worried about those counterattacks. He even kept some of the Banelings alive, so I feel like those are valuable, and maybe that's what he needs to prevent Hydra from just moving across the map and counterattacking while he potentially gets up his own roach count to a heavy enough number and even drones up to a heavy enough number. Yeah, once again, still just barely behind on the drone count and the army count. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Hydra uh -huh. is going to go into that spire. So the Overseer luckily scouts this. But the question is, like, now what does he do? Like, he tried the Nidus thing. It didn't work. So he's going to try the Hydra's thing now? Well, now you have to make sure that they're not just dedicating to, like, eight mutas, but they're actually dedicating to, like, 20, 30 mm -hmm. mutas, which Hydra's can still be picked off from. Sport crawlers can actually die, and you can just... It's a whole mess, all right? It's, it's a whole mess. <laughs> and, uh... As it does feel like Hydra has a bit more control in this game, it's up to, to him to kind of choose, pick and choose. Well, I like this decision over here from Sora. He's going for the Hydra Ascend, which will be scouted, but Hydra's are going to be able to deal with the Mutalus. And he even knocks down those backdoor rocks, so I'm thinking, you know what, maybe oh. he gets up the Hydra Ascend. If, Sor if Hydra invests into the Mutalus, then, hey, if those mutals don't accomplish much, because mutals, they, they are not fighting units, they are not made for engaging against the army directly, uh, especially against Hydralis, then, hey, that is a way that sort of can pull ahead, is more cost-effective usage of Hydralis versus Mutalis. That's true. I uh, owed at this Baneling Nest, so Hydra, the guy who just doesn't mm. care about Baneling Nest, <laughs> actually getting one in the mid-game, which I thought meant that he was going to actually dedicate more into those Mutas, and maybe go like Muta Baneling, try and get sort of to overcommit to those Hydras, not get enough Roaches, but he's mm. doing what looks to be Roach, well, Roach Tunneling Claws, but also Roach Baneling, which is something we see. We saw definitely in Heart of the Swarm. It's a it's a one-two kind of punch where you literally only have two punches, <laughs> uh, and then you're you're kind of out of out of luck and you're out of gas. You haven't won by then, then it's dangerous. But it is a very powerful combination. Yeah, even getting Burrow play over here with tunnel, as you mentioned, tunneling claws and everything. And I am just thinking about some of the possibilities. But Zergen's trying to run by over here for sort of. He's gonna make his way into the main base, but doesn't go. Mm -hmm. Okay, he is moving in. He spots the Banley nest. Ah. Maybe a sort of weird reveal. He might be thinking to his head, like, wait a second, that wasn't there earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm not sure what he's thinking, though. Like, did I just, did he think, like, okay, it's definitely roaches? Because he saw the roaches and the lings mm -hmm. and the Bingley Nest. Or did he think, oh, did I miss the mutas? But either way, I think the response is still very similar. You're going to want to get infestors. You're going to stop the mutas. You're going to want to stop the banelings. It's good just all around in Roach versus Roach Wars. So he still has to play defensive no matter what. That's kind of crappy, mm. but he can still win the game defensively. Well. Yeah, Infestation could <laughs> also go in up right now for sort of, and he's going to have to deal with this big engagement while he's uh, investing quite a bit into his tech right now, but huh? he's sitting at a decent oh, amount of army Jesus. supplies. Oh, it's oh this is going to get weird. This is going to get very weird. Throw some bile shots, maybe? Oh, his own banelings are kind of having to wrap around his own roaches, and that not up going so well. Oh, dear. Oh. I still feel like, I mean, Hydra has a much bigger army still, and with Roach Burrow, oh, Roach Burrow uh, being detected right now by the Overseer, but still, Hydra just has an overwhelming number of units right now. The Defender's Advantage is going to have to be very important for sort of if he wants any chance of holding this. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's that's no. game. That is a 3-0. Hydra makes it to the round of eight.